And Top Story is always brought to you by Vodafone. Now, government's controversial decision to impose a 15% value on the tax on electricity has tonight firmly pitched it against organized labor. Led by the Trades Unions Congress, labor has issued a one-week ultimatum to the finance minister to withdraw the tax or face your wrath. Now, the Electricity Company of Ghana has confirmed to Joy News the tax has appalled its customers and is yet to enforce a directive which should have taken effect on January 1. Well, labor... Uh, today uh, put together its members and made a declaration. They have declared they will never pay the tax and are ready to grind the country to a halt to force the government to comply. Uh, listen to the TUC Secretary General, Dr. Yaba. It is worth noting that 30 kilowatts hour of electricity allows the lifeline customers to use only three lead bulbs. One a, one electric ion, one television, and one fan. You know, and I want to emphasize that this 30 kilowatt hour thing, lifeline, it was 50 since the early 90s. Yes. Then in 2022, PURC changed it from 50 to 30. They did it quietly. We note that since 2022, electricity tariffs have gone up by 73%. So in 2021, if you were paying 100 Ghana cities, now that same customer is paying 173 Ghana cities. So today, organized labor, we have come together again, and our message to government is very simple. We cannot pay VAT on electricity, period. We will not pay it today, we will not pay it tomorrow. So, we are giving government up to 31st January 2024 to withdraw the letter. If by that time the Minister for Finance has not given the directive to ECG and NETCO to stop the implementation of VAT on residential customers, we will advise ourselves. We'll hear from the Electricity Company of Ghana pretty shortly and organized labor, but my colleague Blessed Sogan is with me in the studio. Blessed, you. You were there at this press conference. Uh, this was not a TUC show, was it? This was also a show of unity among organized labor against this task. Uh, in fact, when you talk about the composition of TUC, it's the umbrella body for all labor associations here in Ghana, and they are internationally recognized and certified by the International Labor Organization, ILO. Uh, so which means that the composition uh, goes beyond a, member a membership of 20 other groups uh, and more because you have uh, both public and private sector labor unions working under this uh, umbrella body and it's the reason for which they organized this emergency meeting bringing together the leadership of all these various branches under the organization mm, and they've been talking to you beyond what we had from the tuc secretary general there are other unions who are taking this even further for them this country they are ready to grind it to a halt, but also other uh, threats that they want to carry out if government does not comply. The, the indication we're getting from some of the groups, uh, including uh, the Ghana National Association of Teachers and the graduate teachers, and also the public sector workers, is that they're running out of patience and they believe that their leadership is even going at a slow pace. The groups uh, are warning that they may have to withdraw their services across the country if their leadership fails to secure a deal with government on the reversal of the policy by the 31st of uh, January this year. And in fact, we have some of the public sector workers threatening that they may grind the country to a halt just on this issue. We are going all out. And I have indicated before in previous interviews during the DDEP that we are ready to grant this country and start afresh. We are ready to do that. We have sacrificed enough. We have sacrificed enough. We are not ready to go on this business. Ghana has come to a stage that we now need to move to the developmental stage. This business as usual over the past over 30 years is finished. And the new generation of labor leaders are not going to take this. If they've got the men where they are sought, they should sit with us. We want to use the National Tripartite Committee, which is in the labor law. These issues can be discussed there. When they came, we introduced social di dialogue, the tripartite partnership, as our leaders said. Not even one policy has been brought to be discussed. So what are we talking about? They are to manage the country for our benefit, not for individual benefit. So we won't take it. 
and they will see. They can take us for the ride. And whatever will happen in this country, we know the citizens, our families, every Ghanaian, they are suffering. It's only a few that are enjoying. We are not ready to pay this VAT. It is not about reduction. It is not about negotiating it down. It is just wrong. And government should withdraw it wholly. That's all. Are you sure that your members are indeed feeling the pain? Because ECG has not started implementing Yes, but you see, we have to prevent it. Our members are already feeling the pain of a myriad of taxes that is already being imposed on the people. There is hardship in the Ghanaian society. There is hardship in our society. And government is not interested in implementing policies that will reduce the hardship of our people. Go down to the people in the various communities and the townships and you will see stark reality of suffering and hardship. And for any government in this situation to impose more taxes is just to say that that government is insensitive. If we don't get it, we'll continue to communicate on our platforms and the next actions that we need to take, we'll take them. And I think the leader of organized labor, Dr. Yaoba, uh, used a phrase here that we will advise ourselves. And when organized labor talks about advising itself, uh, there's only one and only one action only. But of course, like I said, we'll use the various platforms. We have to continue discussing it. But we are hoping that um, in the spirit, in the spirit of social partnership, the government will do the right thing in terms of removing this VAT. It, is, it cannot be the only source of generating revenue for the country. Uh, but did they explain the real reasons why they're so incensed? Uh, a number of factors. And, and there's one um, revelation coming up, which we'll talk about shortly. But uh, we heard from Dr. Yaoban pointing out clearly that if you look at the definition from the finance ministry, those consuming above the lifeline level would have to pay this 15% value added tax. And if you look at the net, according to them, uh, per research, a lifeline consumer, according to the definition of the Electricity Company of Ghana, is someone who is just operating with three light bulbs, a fan, uh, a television, and also an iron. That's all. But you know that an, an average worker would obviously have some other electronic gadgets that they would have at home or work with. That's their concern, that it then puts majority of their members out of the lifeline category, then pushing them to pay this 15% additional charge. They are, however, puzzled as to why the government of Ghana is now promising mining firms, multinational companies, the reversal on value-added tax on their transactions. The belief is that these firms are making a significant amount of money and government simply does not understand why uh, I mean, the, the labor unions do not understand why government will now be promising to reverse their value-added tax and impose a 15% additional tax on these groupings. It is also important and very, very sad, comrades, very, very sad to note that why government is imposing VAT on us, residential customers of electricity. Plans are far advanced to remove VAT on mineral exploration in Ghana for wealthy multinational mining companies. And the media reports that we have read indicate that the Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, in a meeting with Ghana Chamber of Mines, assured them, Abu Jinapo, assured them that uh, that policy will be implemented in the first quarter of 2024. What, what kind of life is this? What, what kind of? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you impose, you impose tariffs on poor consumers of electricity and then the wealthy multinationals, you are going to remove it. And he met them and assured them that by the end of this quarter, they are going to remove VAT from exploration for these rich companies. I mean, so what kind of country are we living in? Normally, in the situations like what we have in Ghana today, when our economy is misbehaving and so on, what, what happens normally is that our mineral resources, because those of you who have studied economics, minerals, gold and the rest, they are anticyclical. So if you have checked, when economies go down, people invest in gold. 
So if you have gold and there is a problem and your economy is going down, you use the gold to prop it up. That's why they were trying this uh, oil for gold, whatever they are calling it. In a situation like this, that's what we expect. When there are shocks, both internal and external, you use your mineral resources because this is God given. You use it to deal with the shocks, to cushion your economy from this external and internal shock. But in Ghana, sadly, that is not the case. It's, it's always the poor people in this country, including pensioners, who bear the brunt. And we should not allow that to continue. Joining me right now is the Deputy Secretary General of the TUC, Joshua Ansa. Mr. Ansa, thanks for your time here on Top Story. Good evening, my brother. How are you? Great to have you. Uh, before I even hear uh, your thoughts on what has happened and your plans for uh, the next one week, if the finance minister doesn't withdraw this tax, I want to bring in the ECG. Uh, Leila Bubakari is the external communications manager there. Just to understand uh, where the company is right now in implementing this policy. Uh, Leila, thanks for your time here on Top Story. From what I understand, you are yet to implement this uh, directive to you to impose a 15% tax. Um, has that changed? Uh, it's still the same. Uh, we are trying to put things in context. The letter from Ministry of Finance stated clearly that uh, we should liaise with the Ghana Revenue Authority mm -hmm. to implement this, to make sure that the implementation is smooth. And I think that from ECJ's side, we need to contextualize it for the Ghana Revenue Authority before we begin implementation. And by contextualizing it, we would have to let them know the expected amount of revenue uh, for the next quarter or so and how much the tax would bring into their coffers. So those conversations are still being had. And until then, we, have, we haven't yet implemented it. To be clear, this 15%, who exactly will it affect when it comes to your customers? It's going to affect all our residential customers who use power above the lifeline limit, which is 30 kilowatts per hour. Per the PURC, those who use under 30 kilowatts are charged um, a different tariff, which is called the lifeline, which is significantly cheaper and those who go above then have a different tariff. And so anyone who goes above 30 kilowatts hour and is in the residential bracket is expected to pay when this is implemented. So it only affecting the residential customers, not commercial customers? Well, the commercial uh, special load tariff customers do pay 20% uh, VAT already. So they are already paying the VAT, but our residential not yet. What sort of feedback are you getting from your customers since this was announced? Because many thought uh, until we heard from you uh, this week when we spoke to you that you've already started implementing this. Yes, um, it's, been, it's been a challenge, you know, because we interface with the customers on a daily basis. Uh, their first point of call is to us. I try to let them understand that this is something that is coming from the Ministry of Finance and the Ghana Revenue Authority. Ours is to implement. It's unfortunate that we interface with them and would have to hear their sentiments. The sentiment out there generally isn't good because of the economic hardships that a lot of people are facing. Unfortunately, our legal ammunition does not come in for us to advocate in any effective manner for the customer. That lies within the PRC to advocate for the customer. And so usually we tell the customers to relay their frustrations to the Public Utility Regulatory Commission for them to liaise with the Ghana Revenue Authority. In any case, this is a law that has been passed and should have been implemented. By law, it should have been implemented in 2013. And if there's any amendment that can happen, that would have to happen between different factions in government. We are just having these conversations with our stakeholders, which includes the Ministry of Finance, the Ghana Revenue Authority, our internal staff as well, um, to understand how our implementation would affect our revenues. The conversations you're having with the GRA to get to a point where you can implement this, how is that going? Um, I do not have any current information for you on that level because that's very high level. But I think that as soon as all the agreements are made, we are required by PRC to educate our customers on how it's going to affect our customers 
at the point where they are buying power. So as soon as these decisions are made and the button is pressed, we would go out to educate our customers on how the VAT is going to apply to their purchases of bills or payment of bills. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, that is there is uh, Leila Bubakari who speaks for the ECG. Uh, she is external relations manager uh, for the company, uh, giving us a sense of where uh, they stand tonight uh, with the talks with the ECG as they uh, approach implementation of this policy that would mean that you pay uh, more than 15% more. Actually, uh, if you calculate this, uh, some put it at uh, 21% on what you already pay to the ECG. Uh, Joshua Ansai is a Deputy Secretary General of the TUC, uh, joins us. They held a press conference uh, today. Uh, Ms. Ansai, the Finance Minister uh, has a message for you on this particular subject. Listen to him. Well, the, the Governor was clear to you that it's not going to be inf inflationary. Uh, but more important, I mean, um, we have all sorts of tax reliefs that you don't want to talk about. Um, and with regards to um, the taxes um, on electricity uh, that was um, some time ago and it doesn't affect um, you know um, sort of the lifeline um, tax um, people uh, and so I think we should be all right the emissions tax as you know is really 100 cities a year that's what we are praying about I think we'll be okay Mr. Asa, will you be okay you will never be okay even we will never be okay. We are not okay, and I don't think we'll be okay. But he is clear, though, that this will not affect, and as he's been explained by the ECG spokesperson, uh, lifeline customers, the poorest of the poor. So the government estimation, whoever is going to pay this should be able to afford it. But even who determines the lifeline for poor workers of this country? If you are saying the last line is 30 kilowatts per hour, then it means our research has indicated that the 30 kilowatts per hour is for one bulb or two bulbs, a fan, and nothing more. If you are switching your fridge on for some time, all the television for more than some five hours, then it means you are going to be affected by paying this tax. So the last line itself is as slow as nothing to write home about. And the poor people of this very country, who are the workers in this very country, are all living in the compound houses. Only few are in their own homes. So definitely, they are going to be affected. But even what I want to sound here is that in Ghana, we don't have to wait for things to be established before you start preventing it. It becomes very difficult. Once the final commissioner has issued that directly, Labour will want to put a stop. That is why we had a press conference this afternoon, this morning, to actually tell the finance minister and the government that they should withdraw that letter because we are not ready to pay any more taxes on electricity, whether it's beneficial to them or whatever it is. Government must be elsewhere to find money the way they are talking about the IMF way of getting some funds. But are you ready to engage government on this, though? And have you been engaged? Has anybody reached out to you to explain why the government has to t impose a 15% tax? Is it even, you know what interesting in this very country? Those who are bringing a policy should have also thought it wise to also have an engagement with their people. But there was no engagement and this directive has come out. So how do you expect us to engage? All what Labour is calling for is a total withdrawal of that paper of that directly by 31st of this month and to the old peace in this very we are we are serious about it and we think that government will listen and do as we have come I mean, you just listened to the ecg spokesperson they yes. are already in conversation with the gra on how to implement this he says once that is done they are confident that this will be enforced although they she admits that the feedback from their customers hasn't been good the conversations have started. You said you've given the government up to 31st. It's just one week away. Is that a realistic time frame? It is more than realistic. It is more than realistic to us as labor. And we are, we are cautioning. We are sending a note of warning to government that that paper must be resolved. Because we are making enough for workers of this very country. It is enough. Taxes is enough. Pay tax for a poor worker on electricity. A poor worker who is just one bulb. Which is one fund 
and even one uh, uh, cringe or even it's becoming too much for us. So we think that the one big problem is to fix the law. And uh, the students think that we are just saying for saying it. This is a matter for all Ghanaians and every worker in this very country. But we mean it. I get a sense that this is one of those issues you're not ready to compromise on. No negotiations around this. Yes, Ivan. No negotiations about this one at all. Because government knows what it's doing. And Ivan, I must tell you that this is not the only tax that is getting its face, uh, its real, its ugly head on our face. There are a lot to come. If you don't, if you don't manage this one very well, what is going to come is, is going to be very dangerous for workers of this very country. So we are saying the paper or the dirty man will drone and they let us come to with our lives in this very country. The finance minister in the clip I played to you says that, well, there have been other tax reliefs that uh, they've they've introduced. The, last year, they negotiated with you, came to a fair conclusion on on what you should earn going into 2024. If you put all that together, the finance minister says, well, they've done a bit to meet you halfway, but they need this 15%, considering where the economy is right now. Isn't that a fair ask? But Evans, I've told you that Labour is not ready to engage in those kind of debates. We think that it is unbearable. Workers can no longer bear such a tax. And government must, must withdraw. And uh, withdraw that uh, paper. And also the directives must, must stop. So if uh, least it is an engagement with VRA or whatever, then I, don't, I think that uh, it, it, it's going to be a, 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 a futility in this decision. What we want to say is that the workers pay cannot take them home. Workers are already burdened with taxes. Workers are already burdened. I mean, the economic situation in this country is very hard, and we can no longer entertain new taxes. Government must find a way of letting those who don't pay tax to also pay tax to augment whatever finances government need in this very country. Workers are suffering too much, and enough with the taxes. On electricity, very soon it will come to water, very soon it will come to everything. Then, I mean, how can we make life with meat in this very country? We are, we, are, we are just saying that it is enough and government must withdraw that uh, paper and uh, stop that directive. Uh, Mr. Joshua, so thank you very much. He's the Deputy Secretary General of the TUC. Also joining me right now is the President of the uh, National Association of Graduate Teachers, Angel Cabano. Uh, Angel, you have members. You went into the meeting today with a message from your members. What was that message? The, the message is that Daniels are suffering. The taxes are telling on us negatively. The individual financial situation of the Ghanaian worker is gone awry. And the economic situation is telling on us heavily and painfully. I have a feeling that the sensitivity of government is gone. And that government is very interested in straightening their books to satisfy a certain organization called the IMF at the peril of the, of the, of the, of the, of the Ghanaian. The same IMF is an organization that people made noise in this country that they will not go. People made noise in this country that it is not the answer to our problem. Now, this same IMF is giving us directives. When you read a letter signed by the Minister of, uh, uh, Economic, uh, Minister of Finance, it indicated that the directive is based on agreement with the IMF writing to ECG and NETCO to take steps to slap a VAT on electricity bills. Today it is electricity. I can assure you tomorrow it will be water. Only God knows where it is going to end. I mean, Mr. Kabunu, just last year, towards the end of the year, you got a 23% increase in your base pay across board which was supposed to take effect from january to june this year and then further then moves up to 25 percent from july to december 
Doesn't that put you in a place to accommodate this increase? Ivan, I have told you several the salary of the Ghanaian teacher or the public service. And I've been telling you that this is three percent of someone whose salary is three thousand Ghana cedis. Uh, that 23% is subject to tax. It's nothing to write home about. In fact, there are people who, when they receive their salary, they use their salary to pay loans. And then they struggle for the month. So the situation is getting dire. Unfortunately, the people at the helm of affairs seems to have detached themselves from the pain and misery of the Ghanaian water, of the Ghanaian populace. Even people are suffering. People are really, really, really suffering in this country. And, and just before you go, uh, this 23% should have taken effect this month or should take effect. It should reflect on your bank yes, account. It should reflect at the end of January. January. But that is nothing to write home about. That is absolutely nothing to write home about. They say inflation is falling. No, our prices of commodities are still high. So a falling inflation does not really tell on the pocket. Even people are suffering in this country. You've said people that people are suffering. You've said that if the finance minister does not withdraw the directive. Oh, 31st January. If this directive is not withdrawn unconditionally, organized labor do not have a choice than to advise themselves. Yeah, what does that mean, really? Oh, let me say it bluntly. You will engage in industrial action. Withdraw your services? Yes. That has the potential to cripple this country. I mean, considering ah, the people who are people. going to withdraw their services, they are already crippled economically. We are crippled. The Ghanaian worker is already crippled. So I don't see how we should be trying for a crippled economy. Even people are suffering. Mr. Kabono, thank you very much. And he is the president of the Ghana National Association of Graduate Teachers. I want to hear from you tonight. Do you agree with organized labor? He's been blunt. He says they will declare an industrial action. They will withdraw their services. And considering the wide array of labor unions uh, who met today, uh, this indeed, as they themselves couched it, will grind this country to a halt. Do you agree with their position? 055 11 11997. News night in a minute.